Welcome to the Mirror of the World, and I want to thank you for joining today. My name is Buki Adioshun, and I'm excited to bring you the word of the Lord today. Let's have a short prayer. Father, in Jesus' name, we say thank you. Thank you, Lord, because you are going to reveal something to us in your word today, something we need to pay attention to that we transform our lives in Jesus' name. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for teaching us. We thank you for revealing the mind of the Father to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, the Mirror of the World is a program where we read a chapter of the Bible, we pray for those who are sick, and we then give someone the opportunity to sign up for Jesus. Uh, we do this 10 p.m. UK time every day, um, except on Friday when we have our Bible study, 9 to 10 online Bible study, and then we do prayer meeting on Tuesday from 9 to 9.30. The reason we're doing this is because we want to encourage someone to read the Bible, not just read the Bible, to get a revelation from the Lord directly. Um, God said, or the Bible said in First Corinthians, Second um, Second Corinthians, sorry, chapter three, He says that um, God's word is like a mirror, and when we look into it, um, it's like we we see the glory of God or the image of Christ. So every time you read God's word. Uh, there's something in there that God wants to show you. And after seeing what God wants to show you in his word, then we have the Holy Spirit, you know, who is going to transform us into what we see. So that scripture says we move from one level of glory to another level of glory. So if we are going to be people who move from one level of glory to another level of glory, then we must be people who continue to behold. Uh, like that scripture say, we must be people who continue to search, we must be people who continue to seek, you know, to know more of God. Um, there's another scripture that talks about grace and peace be multiplied unto you. And he said, through the knowledge of our God and our, and our Lord Jesus Christ. So grace and peace, you know, peace comes when you come into the knowledge of God. So that's the reason why we're encouraging someone to do this. Uh, and we are currently reading Exodus. Uh, we are on Exodus chapter 24 today. Uh, in Exodus chapter 23, we said there is a word here, uh, Exodus chapter 23, where it says that the Lord will bless your bread, he will bless your water, and we take out sickness from you, and there shall be no more miscarriages in the land. Exodus chapter 23, verse 25. This is one word I want you to say to yourself all the time. You know, most times we leave our confession to when we get to church. We leave our confession to when we have Christian gathering or meetings. No. Um, or maybe sometimes we even do the confession where we're in trouble, but that is not the way it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be something we do on a regular basis. So God said, and there shall be no more miscarriages. Uh, God said, none of them shall be found barren. You know, it starts with, you will serve the Lord your God. So that's a good thing for you to say to yourself. Take Exodus 23, 25, say, I will serve the Lord my god and he will take away from me sickness and diseases and then you know he will bless my bread and he will bless my water so and as you continue to do that you will see that you won't need to come down with illness you will find divine provision there will be bread for you to eat there will be water for you to drink uh, because that's what god says and that's what he will do for you. So today we are going to be reading Exodus chapter 24. Uh, we're going to continue from where we stop in Exodus chapter 23. So I want to invite you uh, to please join me as we read Exodus chapter 24. I want you to please um, get your Bible 
uh, because we are going to be doing the reading together and i want you to please do me a favor you know whatever minister to you um from the scripture we're going to read today i want you to please post it as a comment at the bottom of this video uh, this is really not another teaching session but rather is an opportunity for us to look at god's words together I may not be able to respond immediately, immediately, but after the broadcast, I will go back to the video and will respond to your comment. Let's be a blessing, whatever the Lord has shown you. And as we read it together, I say, oh, I didn't see that before. And the Lord just revealed that to me. So let's read Exodus chapter 24. I am going to be reading today from the King James Version of the Bible. Exodus chapter 24 from the King James Version of the Bible. And he said to Moses, Come up unto the Lord, thou and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and the seventy of the elders of Israel, and worship you afar off. And Moses alone shall come near the Lord, but they shall not come near. Neither shall the people go up with him. And Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all the judgments. And all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words which the Lord has said we will do. And Moses wrote all the words of the Lord and rose up early in the morning and builded an altar under the hill and twelve pillars according to twelve tribes of Israel. And he sent young men of the children of Israel, which offered bond offerings and sacrificed and sacrificed peace offering of oxen unto the Lord. And Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins, and half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar. And he took the book of the covenant and read in the audience of the people. And they said, All that the Lord has said to us, we will do and be obedient. And Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, Behold, the blood of the covenant, which the Lord had made with you concerning all these words. Then went up Moses and Aaron and Nadab and Abihu and seventy of the elders of Israel. And they saw the God of Israel, and there was under his feet, as it were, a paved work of sapphire stone, and as it where the body of heaven in his clearness. And upon the nobles of the children of Israel, he laid not his hand. Also they saw God and did eat and drink. And the Lord said to Moses, Come up unto me in the mount and be there, and I will give you tables of stone and a law and commandments which I have written that thou mayest teach them. And Moses rose up and his minister Joshua and Moses went up into the mount of God, and he said unto the elders, Tarry ye here for us, until, until we come again unto you. And behold, Aaron and Hur are with you. If any man have any matters to do, let him come up, let it come unto them. And Moses went up into the mount, and a cloud covered the mount, and the glory of the Lord above the mount Sinai. And the cloud covered it six days, and the seventh day he called unto Moses out of the midst of the cloud. And the sight of the glory of the Lord was like devouring fire on top of the mount in the eyes of the children of Israel. And Moses went into the midst of the cloud and got him up into the mount. And Moses was in the mount forty days and forty nine. Praise the Lord. Now, the first thing that uh, actually is going to be the main thing I'm going to be talking about today is on the importance of coming up unto the Lord. Um, I know that uh, the people of my color, you know, originally where I came from, there used to be a lot of mountains and people would say, we want to go to the mountains and we want to go and pray. Um, some people go there to pray, to, to petition God. Some people go there to ask God for direction or for instruction. Um, however, the thing that I really want us to see and I want us to pay our attention to here is that you don't have to travel up to a mountain except the Lord said to you um, that you need to come there. Uh, one of the things we need to find out about Moses is that when the Lord appeared to him before he went to Egypt, God told him as a proof, uh, as a as a 
confirmation that I will do what I said to you. He said, when you come out from Egypt, you will come and worship me on this mountain. So the Lord brought him to a mountain, you know, just as a kind of a confirmation of what he said to him. If the Lord is calling you up to come to a mountain, that's fine. You can go there. But what I want us to see in that scripture, I want us to see a couple of words in there. So I'm going to put it on the screen um, shortly. Uh, the first thing I want us to see is, there is that, and the Lord said unto Moses, come up into the mount and be there. So there are times in our lives that we just need to come up unto the Lord. We need to separate ourselves unto the Lord and just be there to hear what he will have to say to us. Uh, and I was just wondering that um, the Lord already gave Moses and the people the commandment. We started reading the, about the commandments, about the law. You remember the commandments, uh, the, the, um, the Ten Commandments was given first in Exodus chapter 20. So it wasn't as if, you know, and I, and I found out something while reading these, you know, before finally God wrote it down for them. God told them about it first. And God presented it to them and they say, oh, yes, we will do it. Whatever the Lord said, we are willing and we will do it. And now God now told Moses, he said, I need you to come up. So it's one thing that I have given you the commandment, but you need to understand it. Uh, he said, he said, and I will give it to you. I will give you the tables of stone. I have told you, but I will give you this table, tables of stone and a law and the commandment which I have written that thou mayest teach them. It does appear to me that there are so many things that we can teach, even as pastors, as servants of God, but hey, um, it's a different thing from teaching what we receive from the Lord. We can actually teach from the book. At our Bible studies, uh, we, we look at uh, the story in Matthew chapter 16, when Jesus Christ asked the disciples, say, who do men say that I am? And then they said, some said you are Elijah, some said you are Elijah, some said you are this, you are that. And then he asked them, who really do you think I am? And they couldn't answer until Peter said, Thou art Christ, the Son of the living God. And um, when you look at the message translation of that scripture, he says, Jesus told him, he said that, you know, flesh and blood. He said, you didn't learn that from the book. He said, my father in heaven must have let, let you in, or God must have told you that. So, it's, it's important for us to come up, to separate ourselves, to come up like, you know, God told Moses, he said, come, here is the commandment I told you, but, you know, like, like uh, I'm, I'm into contract management and they say, okay, uh, give us the, the top headlines, but you know, say, and then I say, the devil is always in the details. Come and let me teach you the details because that's where the problem really is. Uh, because if care is not taken, you know, it can become a form of a bondage to you. And I eventually, until Christ came, that was what it was to them. They, 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 they were under the burden of the law. So God told Moses and said, come up unto me. Come up unto me. And I want us to look at some things here. Um, yeah, there's a difference between what God said to you directly and what you heard from people. So you can hear a word from the mouth of the servant of the Lord, and you can hear a word from God directly. Uh, the, the, the instances the Lord has spoken to me, you know, he spoke to me concerning this program. Uh, the only reason why I'm doing this is because the Lord says so. I, I think probably if somebody told me to do it, there have been so many things that, you know, um, will have get, uh, gotten in the way and I won't be able to do it. But because I had a word from the Lord and within that word that I had from the Lord, there is strength, there is grace, there is ability, you know, there is, there, there is revelation, you know, there is, uh, my capacity is increased to be able to do this. So what I want to encourage you to do is uh, as we approach the new year, as we wind down on 2018, I want you to propose in your heart that I'm going to come up on to go to teach me his Lord, uh, his laws. I'm going to come up unto God to teach me his law. I want to know uh, the details about the law of God so that I can serve him the way I am supposed to uh, serve him. 
I found out that the secret uh, of the Lord is for those who are ready to climb with him. Uh, and what do I mean by that? You know, you notice that God separated Moses from the crowd right here. Uh, he told him, he said, first and foremost, come with yourself, with Abihu, Nada, and then the 70 elders. Then he came to a point, he said, okay, tell those people to, to just be there at the feet of the mountain. You need to come up higher. And we were told Joshua was right there, uh, you know, climb up a little bit with him, and then Moses went up unto the Lord. So if we are going to be people who are going to hear God, we must make a commitment to climb up higher. Now, let, let's look at a scripture in matthew let's look at the scripture in matthew uh chapter 5 matthew chapter 5 and i want us to see uh something in that scripture matthew chapter 5 when jesus saw his ministry drawing huge crowd can you see that he climbed on he climbed a hillside those who were apprenticed to him they committed climbed with him Arriving at a quiet place, he sat down and taught his climbing companions. Now, one thing you're going to have to do in the year 2019 is that you must be among the climbing companions of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's look at that. You cannot remain in the, you cannot remain in the, in the, um, in the crowd. And you think you are going to hear God. I mean, it, 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 you, you can imagine, you know, if you are in the crowd where there is a gathering, the gathering is there and, they, and I, I can tell you it's difficult for you to hear God. You must propose in your heart to climb with him. You must propose in your heart to come to a separate place. You know, I, I remember something that my spiritual father and the Lord told me. He said, because... Of, of the difficulties because of the schedules of life things we have to go through walk time is difficult for people to now separate themselves unto the lord to hear god he said but what you can do is that uh you you can you can uh put the condition of your heart you can develop a mindset that while you are going to walk the lord will speak to you while you're in the bathroom the lord will speak to you everywhere the lord will speak to you i i know people talk about oh the holy spirit no but i'm talking about you expecting to hear god with with regards to a particular matter even though you are not praying you are even though you are not fasting but and you can even fast but you having that kind of mindset that frame of mind you are expecting um example i can give you is let's say uh you did an interview and then they said they're going to get back to you what happened you will be looking forward to that call uh you'll be waiting for it at any moment you you want to put your phone uh on vibration if it's not going to be allowed to ring because you are expecting a call so we must develop the same attitude because we read right here in that matthew chapter 5 uh that jesus taught his climbing companions you cannot remain at the feet of the mountain you cannot remain at the bottom you cannot remain in the crowd and expect to be taught by the Lord is not going to happen, brothers and sisters. I notice when you look at the parable of the sower. Uh, after giving the parables, then you know his disciples will come to him. Those who are apprentices to him, those who are committed to him, those who are ready to climb with him. So the question now is that: Are you ready to come up unto him, or do you want to continue to live from the mouth, uh, to continue to live from the word that you get from the mouth of your man of God? That's a key decision you have to take in the year 2019. Do you want to climb or with? Jesus and hear directly from him or do you want to continue you want to continue to hear from what somebody said you know and that's a big challenge I'm not saying it's not okay for us to uh, listen to what other people said what the man of God said no that's not what I'm saying but you must make a quality determination so let's say <laughs> The man of God has got just, I mean, most churches now, maximum one hour teaching. 
you know and he wants to cover everybody in the service he wants to cover somebody who is got a broken heart somebody who is in financial mess and things and stuff like that and you need a specific instruction with regards to something there is a possibility that in that service it may not be covered by the man of god okay so that's why you then now have to learn how to climb with him you have to climb with him you have to be in the place you have to put your mindset you have to have a frame uh a mind frame you know to say i want to hear from the lord so that is key and that's very uh important now jesus christ now gave us an express invitation and we find that in matthew chapter 11 uh matthew chapter 11 verses 25 to 30. i, I want to quickly read that from the okay plan some time where you are going to be with the lord in the i mean when i say with the lord i'm, I'm not saying you're going to leave I, plan your time plan plan some getaway time with the lord where you're going to say god i am here for you i'm here to listen to you i'm here to learn something from you i'm not talking about when you go to church no no no, no. i'm talking about you can even take a day off and say lord i, I want to study the parable of the sewer lord there are some things there that i think i need you to teach me i want to hear from you and then you take your bible you take different translation of the bible and then you begin to read it and then you begin to ask the holy spirit which is the final point i want to make um first john chapter 2 verse 26 to 27 first john 2 26 to 27 it says that um i have written to warn you about those who are trying to deceive you we are in the last day we are in these days where there are so many teachings targeted teachings uh, some teachings are targeted towards you to make you give your money some teachings are targeted towards you to make you follow a particular doctrine i mean i i i i i struggled with this how could a man of god tell people to go and eat grass i mean just think about it and um you might be saying they are stupid no they 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 i mean i really don't know but you know they did it you know uh, i saw something i mean not that i go and look for this video people just send it across and another one you know climbing on people say the lord said said to him he must not walk on on ground you know so he has to climb on people and people volunteer themselves the truth is this let me tell you something my brother my sister when you come to that place in your life where you are desperate people can do anything a people can do anything when you are about to go down and there is no hope for you whatever you think you can there can be a kind of uh, a little bit or that can bring a little bit of comfort to you as at that particular point in time you are more than willing to do it that's why people do drugs that's why people do different kind of things so we don't really blame them but the truth of the matter is that these teachings are targeted to make people behave in a particular way um maybe you don't know that the same way you are some people can be addicted to drugs 
the same way people can be addicted to the teaching of a man of God. Oh yes, you know, that just came to me now. You can be addicted to the teaching of a man of God to the extent that everything that that person said, you just believe it. You don't even check it out whether it is true or not. Uh, we were told of some Christians in the Bible who went and checked out everything Paul told them to check to confirm if they be true. There is nothing wrong, absolutely nothing wrong in you checking out what I say on this program and then just um, write me uh, a text, you know, and say, you know what, that scripture you quoted, do you mean this or that, you know, uh, yes, I, I, I'll be more than happy to have that kind of conversation and then provide more clarification. Don't just believe anything that you hear, you know, because some messages are targeted to make you behave in a particular way. So that's why First John 2, 26 to 27 says, I have written to warn you about those who are trying to deceive you. So there are a lot of people competing for your attention. The adverts that are placed on Facebook, the adverts on TV, they were meant to make you behave in a particular way. They are meant to make you to want something, to crave for something. They are meant to deceive you, to behave, to doing something you don't want to do. Some of them are or uh, things that are bad. So, for example, uh, the clothes you already have in your wardrobe, you can't finish wearing it. Just say you want to wear one every day. You cannot finish wearing it in the next 365 days. But then you you saw this lovely, beautiful advert without clothes on. You didn't have the money. You have to do buy now, pay later. But still, hey, you still went for it. And you forgot to... You forgot the point that there were people who don't even have clothes that is going to last them a week. So what I'm trying to say is that some teachings are targeted towards making you behave in a particular way. So that's why First John, Elder John, Apostle John was writing. He said, I have written to warn you about those who are trying to deceive you. He said, but there are no match for what is embedded deeply in you. That's talking about the Holy Spirit. He said, the Christ anointing, no less. You don't need any of their so-called teaching. I'm reading from the Message Bible Translation. I want you to go and check that scripture out. First John 2, 26 to 27. He said, Christ anointing teaches you the truth on everything you need to know and about yourself and him oh wow i love that so um you've been struggling you don't even know who you are ah thank you lord thank you lord uh you uh, in, in, in this same scripture this same thing in matthew chapter 18 when peter said when Peter said, Thou art Christ, because God let him in on something. Jesus now told him, Now I will tell you who you really are. Wow. So when you come to into a place of revelation, when you come into that place where God's word is revealed unto you, you will discover who you really are. So he said, Christ anointing teaches you truth on everything. You want to know truth on everything? Get into the word and ask the Holy Spirit to begin to teach you. He said, you need to know about yourself and him. On contaminated by a single lie because the holy spirit will tell you not just what you want to hear it will tell you what the lord wants you to hear and he now says live deeply in what you were taught i hope that you have been blessed by the word of the lord today we need to come up unto him. I want us to pray for those who are sick. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for every single person watching this video right now that are sick. I ask you, Lord, to stretch forth your hands on them and make them whole in the name of Jesus. Lord, I command every asthma to go right now in the name of jesus be healed be made whole i command you to leave your body you will never come down with it again in the name of jesus lord i thank you for this perfection thank you for all the all the sicknesses that you have healed lord i thank you for all the sicknesses that you have taken away from our body we give you praise thank you for keeping us fit and healthy and ready to meet with you i give you praise and i worship you in jesus name amen and amen now quickly before i go i want to give somebody the opportunity to sign up for jesus 
I want you to come and receive eternal life. Jesus Christ said, I came that they might receive eternal life, and this is eternal life, that they might know you, the only true God, and your son Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. So I want you to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, so that you can begin to have a personal relationship with him. You begin to live based on what he said to you, not just based on what somebody said. There can be disappointment when someone told you and said, uh, God is going to do something for you in the next three months, especially uh, somebody, a prophet, tells you and say, by this time tomorrow, you are going to get some money, and the money didn't come. You get disappointed. But it's a different thing when you had God. So if God told you, you're going to get this tomorrow, uh, and you're sure, you know, you, you, you're you really sure. Uh, when tomorrow comes, then you can tell God and say, but God, you told me it's going to happen. So what's going on? That's what I'm talking about. Come into a relationship with God. Come and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Jesus is the way to the Father. If you want to go to God, you have to come through Jesus. That's what the Bible says. So I want you to say these prayers after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I confess that I am a sinner. I repent of my sins today. I believe you died for me so I can have eternal life. I ask you to come into my heart, be my Lord and Savior, in Jesus' name, amen. Congratulations, uh, you are now born again. You are going to see our email address at the bottom of the screen. I, I want you to please get in touch with us, send us an email, write, uh, a text message or call us, and we're going to send some materials to you that is going to help you grow spiritually. Um, and it's going to be free of charge. If you've got any question, you want to be baptized by uh, by immersion, by water, you want to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, please do get in touch with us. Or you need any form of support, you're homeless, you need support, uh, we're going to give you some counseling, we're going to signpost you to where you can get help, and uh, you need any kind of support, someone to just talk to, uh, you can call us, and the Lord will help us to be able to uh, support you. May God himself, the God who makes everything holy and whole, make you holy and whole, put you together, spirit, soul, and body, and keep you fit, for the coming of our master jesus christ the one who called you is completely dependable if he said it he will do it i want to thank you for watching this video if you think it has been a blessing to you and you think it's going to bless someone else i want you to share this video on your social platform uh twitter facebook youtube whatever it is and just be a blessing and i want you to visit our youtube page and i want you to subscribe to heaven of glory so when we upload new video you get an alert to come and um watch uh the video thank you so much for watching this video until i come your way with a fresh edition of the mirror of the world have a wonderful christmas god bless you and bye